Hey y'all, today I am going to be doing some stained glass stuff. Now this is not your standard stained glass. I'm going to be adding some copper wire in it to make it look really skeletal and fragmenty. At least that is my hope. We'll see how it goes. Uh, my inspiration is going to be these skeletal leaves here and like this one where they just kind of like break apart but the veining in, of the leaf is still intact. I love these things and I think they're super cool. I am going to start with green at the base of the leaf and transition to like a red or a yellow um, towards the middle and have some brown towards the top and some clear glass with the copper at the very tip um, just to show the uh, transition between life and death and all that stuff. So we will see how it goes. to start by making a detailed drawing of what I want to do, then loosely sketching color choices with little dots and then numbering each piece. Now that we have a leaf sketch, we will scan this with my Adobe Scan app and print out a few copies. This app makes it super easy to scan any kind of document if you don't have a scanner and uh, yeah, it's free. I like to print out three copies, one to reference, one to cut into pieces, and one for the grinding process. So we're going to take this first copy and slice it up into little pieces. From that, we'll be able to transfer the shapes to the glass and get our generic shapes cut out. And this is why it's super helpful to number your pieces and label the color on them because you'll easily get confused and get them turned around and everything. And you don't want that. Next, we're going to select some glass colors from my little glass stash. Shout out to Spare Parts in San Antonio, craft thrift store that has some awesome stuff. If you're in the area, definitely check them out. I love this texture on this one piece of glass, the clear glass. I think it's going to work really well for my concept. And there we go, I think we've got enough glass to get started. I'm just using a silver sharpie to transfer the individual shapes to the glass, then using a glass cutter to score and some glass prop pliers to break the glass. If you want to learn more about this process, we did a much more in-depth video here. And now we've got all of our pieces cut out, uh, time to get grinding. We got this little grinder from Hobby Lobby. It wasn't too expensive and definitely necessary if you want to get into stained glass. I'll leave a link below. Grinding uh, really helps to even out the brake lines and gives the copper foil a much better surface to grab onto. You can also get more uh, precise shapes with it so that your pieces fit together better. Once you're happy with the glass grinding, you can move on to wrapping each piece with copper foil. This takes a while, but the more time you put into the step, the better the piece will be. You want to lay the tape right in the center line of the glass, wrap it around, and fold it over the edges. Then you can use some sort of tool to flatten out all the foil on all sides. I like to use either the butt end of a Sharpie or a burnishing tool. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. I'm getting all my pieces lined up just how I want them, uh, and then we're going to begin soldering. There's lots of ways to use copper in stained glass pieces. Since copper is what solder sticks to, the possibilities are literally endless. Right here, I'm just adding some copper to the main vein lines to give the joint a thicker solder line. I'm also going to make the stem from copper wire as well as the tip of the leaf. That's why I didn't ever cut those pieces out of the glass. I definitely want to experiment more with this. I really want to try using chopped up copper tubing to create like a bubble effect at some point, but that's for a later video. So next we're gonna get our flux brushed on. That's basically just the go-between glue, if you will, between solder and copper. Without it, your solder will not stick. I'm just tacking each corner first so that the whole piece stays together, and then I'll come back and run the full solder beads later. And you'll probably have to go back and forth and continually put flux back onto the work surface. You'll definitely realize when you do need uh, flux back on your piece because your solder will start not sticking to the piece. 
And here we are with the solder beads. Now I'm definitely no expert when it comes to soldering, so don't roast me too harshly in the comments, but for me, these solder lines are turning out really well. I definitely have more practicing to go. Uh, one of the nice things that uh, about solder is that you, if you made a boo-boo, you can always go back and go over that line and try to fix it. I have noticed though that there is kind of a point of no return when you should just stop screwing around with a joint if it's not perfect because you always run the risk of making it worse than it was. Also one big tip that I learned the hard way starting out is that if you're having trouble with your solder lines it might just be your soldering iron. You need one that is specifically made for stained glass. A standard soldering iron does not have a high enough voltage to keep the solder beads at the temperature that you need. Once I get all the lines done on the front and the tinning around the edges, it's time to flip it over and hit the backside. If you're noticing that you are getting black bubbly looking things in your solder, lay off of the flux a little bit. What happens is the moisture from the flux gets trapped under the solder, boils, and then escapes through the solder, leaving these little ugly bubble marks. Now, something that I regret here, I put the copper wire edging on after I soldered the back of the piece. If you're going to do this, it's much easier to do it while the back of the piece is flat and you have not done the back yet. It makes it a lot harder to control the solder and makes your solder bead pretty messy as you'll see coming up. So same with the glass pieces, you really just want to tack the copper wire in a couple of key spots. Uh, then go over the whole thing and with solder until you are happy with how it looks. The longer wire I have here was a bit of a pain, mostly because as I mentioned, I added it to the piece too late. But live and learn and I did what I could to make it look okay. It still ended up being the messiest solder line on the piece but that's okay. Definitely will practice that more and maybe in the future use flat stock copper or something instead of just plain wire. So now I want to make a tip on the stem that we can hang the whole piece from. For some reason, I thought that it would be a brilliant idea to make the hanging hole by using a nail. Since it wasn't copper, I didn't think the solder was, would stick to it, and I'd be able to just take the nail out once it all cooled down. Uh, that's not how that worked, uh, so you know, don't do this. Uh, solder stuck to the nail since it was coated with zinc or something, and it was a complete pain to get out. So instead I'm just using a small little piece of scrap copper and going to solder it until I'm happy. So to finish out the tip of the leaf, I'm just going to grab a thicker gauge copper on the edges and have a thinner gauge in the middle to give it kind of like a vein-like quality. I found that it's a lot easier to tin the copper first before you add it to the piece, otherwise it'll heat up way too much and the joint will melt away and detach from the rest of the piece. It kind of feels like what I'm doing is like mini welding or something with these copper pieces, which is kind of cool. Just be careful because this was very hot. As you can see, I was alternating between using heat proof gloves and not using the gloves because it was hot to grab, but it was also really hard to grab the copper with the gloves on and keep it in, in the spot that you needed to keep it. So, you know, maybe instead use a pair of pliers to hold your copper in place.
And there we go. This looks so cool. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you all learned something watching this and be sure to subscribe to see what we do next. Bye y'all.